Hello everyone and welcome to WD18, the Watford fan channel. Today I'm going to be doing a player ratings of yesterday's game against Southampton. It finished to 2-0 to Watford. Decore and Yamat of all people with the goals. It was a superb performance all round. Everyone put in a shift. Everyone played very well. And I can't... There's going to be no low ratings today, which is really good. Well, when I say low, I mean like fives like Amrabat was doing in the last couple of weeks. But... Um, this week, I can't see anyone getting below a 7, really. But anyway, let's get straight into it. On to the goalkeeper, Aurelio Gomez. In reality, he didn't have a lot to do. I mean, Southampton only had one shot on target, and that was in the 93rd minute, and it was a comfortable save. It was one for the cameras for Gomez. He almost looked a little bit bored. He just flung himself at it, and it was it was a comfortable save for Gomez. Um, but he didn't do anything wrong, and that's the thing with Gomez. He, he, sometimes he does have a little bit, kind of... He, sometimes he has a couple of lapses of concentration, but... Yesterday, he looked good on the ball. His distribution was good, and he made a save. So, I can't really give him below a 7. So, I'll give Aurelio Gomez a 7, 7.5. Let's say 7.5. Let's be a bit generous for the win. Uh, go on to the right back. Uh, we'll start with Kika Femenia. So, Kika Femenia, I thought he played quite well. We looked, I was saying to my dad, we're so lucky to get a player like Kika Femenia. I'm surprised he didn't go to a kind of a bigger club uh, in, in that sense, a, play, uh, a team that can who are kind of in challenging for the top six because Femenia... I'm telling you, on the ball, he looks so comfortable. He's always looking to overlap. He's very good on the ball. He's, he's, his posi positioning, his touch is, is superb. And I think Kika Femenia deserves an 8 for yesterday's performance. I know he went off injured, so hopefully he's not out for too long. But we saw what Dowry Amak do when he came on. So I'm going to give Femenia an 8. Um, moving on to the right centre-back. And I think this was a very underrated performance from Eunice Cabal. Coming back from his injury after leaving the pitch against Liverpool with a strapped leg... He fitted in so well. Like It was like he hadn't been out the side. And I just thought, him and Cabaselli, they just didn't look like anything was going to get past them. Him, I'll go on to Cabaselli in a minute, who was magnificent yesterday. I thought he was really good. But Kabul, I thought he was very good like Feminier. So I'm going to give Kabul an 8. Um, Cabaselli, uh, this is why I like Cabaselli as our centre-back. Well, I mean, normally I'd have him with Prodal, But Prodal obviously got injured against uh, playing for Austria. Um, and Kabul's come into the side, but Capaselli, there, there was there was a game, there was like a moment in the game where it just it, that was the moment. If it had gone Southampton's way, um, it would have changed the game completely. And that was the block just inside the 18-yard box, and it was fired at him, and he flung himself at the ball to protect it from the goal. And I just thought that was that was a moment where I thought from that moment on we were going to win the game because that was heading for the back of the net. I'm pretty sure it would have ha would have tested Gomez. So. I think Cabaselli deserves a nine. I thought he was really, really good. Um, he made some really good tackles on the ball, comfortable. He was flawless yesterday. I can't think of anything he did wrong, so I'm going to give Cabaselli a nine. Moving on to Jose Holabas, I thought he had a very good game as well. He had a decent free kick in the first half that he got up and down overall, but just um, sailed past the uh, the right-hand post. Um, he, his corners weren't too bad. He, he was on the ball. He looked good. So yeah, I think I'll give him an eight. I think I don't think any of the or any of the defence can be given below um, below an eight really. So um, so I obviously I've got Femini an eight, Kabul an eight, uh, Cavasali a nine, and Holabas an, an eight as well. Moving on to the two players in front. Oh my goodness, Chalaba and Decore. Chalaba was the best player on the pitch for me. I think Chalaba deserves a nine and a half. Oh, he, he made he gained the ball ten times yesterday against. Against Southampton in the middle of the park, he dominated the midfield with Decore. So so good. That partnership is really blossoming, and I, I can tell. Um, I mean, Lee Harris. Uh, shout out to Lee Harris. He said it yesterday. We've got to take. We've got to be happy now because I think these two players could go to a, a real big club in the future. And we've got to kind of, kind of just um, take it all in while they're while they're, while they're both with us because both both Decore and Chalab have got real talent. In the midfield, they were magnificent again. Um, Chalaba is just so elegant on the ball. It's effortless. Nine and a half for me. Superb. And then moving on to Decore. Not not far behind. I mean, he got the goal as well. I think I'll give him nine and a half. I thought winning the ball back, he literally, like the song said, he never gives the ball away. He gets it. He plays it out wide. He's always moving. And the amount of times we broke through Decore and Cleverly as well. I'll go on to Cleverly. That the midfield three of Cleverly, Chalaban and, uh, and sorry and Decore were just so so good and they they were the standout players in the they just ran the game so I'm going to give Decore a nine and a half as well. I'm surprised Richarlison didn't score if I'm going to be honest. I thought he was causing Cedric so many problems down that left hand side. He was having a nightmare Cedric and we saw against Adam Smith. No, they can't deal with him. These defenders 
cannot deal with Richarlson. And I think going ahead, oh, I, I, I don't know what to think. But it, the two, the, well, the two performances I've seen from him so far, away from home anyway, he's looked so good, looking to break. He's always willing to drop back. Really good performance from Richarlson. I'm going to give, I think I'll give him a nine. I thought he was very, very good. Um, and I'm just, I think to not get him a nine and a half or or even higher, um, he just needed a goal. And but I mean, there were so many times in the box it was scram scrambling. He was scrambling for the ball. He's always willing to get that ball just in front of the defender. And I think Rich Olsen deserves a nine for his effort he put in. The amount of times he worked back, he always had an option when he was going forward. He never really gave gave the ball away, and that's because Chalam and Decore always gave him an option. So nine for Rich Olsen. Then moving on to the right hand flank. Andre Carrillo, now this is um, his full debut. He obviously came on against Brighton and he looked okay. But yesterday, I thought he looks quite good. I mean, I think it wasn't it wasn't a suit, like a, an amazing performance where you went, wow. But his positioning was something that I really kind of recognised from the game. It's different to, it's different to Amrabat. Andre Carrillo, his positioning defensively is so much better than Amrabat. He's always in the right position. Going forward, he wasn't... Um, wasn't amazing and he wasn't at his best I don't think but defensively he covered Feminier on well not covered Feminier but he gave him help all the time he was always an option for Feminier and I think uh, Andre Carrillo deserves a seven and a half um, I think seven and a half yeah I don't think it was an amazing force but he did what he had to do and he was unlucky not to get a goal in the end where he kind of well, I thought it was in if you saw my reaction in the uh, match day vlog where it kind of sailed past the left-hand post. I was thinking, oh, yeah, I thought it was going for the top corner. But, um, yeah, Andre Carrillo, seven and a half, decent performance. Moving on to the centre mid, uh, just behind Andre Gray, Tom Cleverley. And now I think this is the this is such an underrated performance from Tom Cleverley. Like Marcus, Marcus Silva says, uh, said in his um, post-match conference uh, with the BBC and uh, with other journalists, he said he, he can't drop Cleverley at the minute and he's, he's becoming undroppable. Tom Cleverley has been so good. Very underrated. He's always the first one to press in the midfield. He's pressing high. He's he can cover. He presses high. He's looking to get forward as well. He's an engine in the midfield. He gives it his all every single game, and that's what I love about Tom Cleverley. Whether he has his best performance on the ball, whether he has his worst, you know what you're going to get with Tom Cleverley, and that is a seven out of ten for just for just for on his effort, and then even more if he can provide and give the ball to other players, and that's why I think Tom Cleverley deserves an eight and a half yesterday. Moving on to the striker now. Andre Gray, I didn't think it was one of his best games. I think he was kind of isolated up front. What I kind of noticed about Gray, he's a little bit static for my liking. Don't get me wrong, I think he's very good going in behind, but I would like to see more of that. I just think he kind of he's kind of coming to coming to feet, and I think his best asset best asset is going in behind. And Stevens, the centre back for Southampton, kind of had his kind of had him in his back pocket in the first half. Second half, he was uh, he was unlucky not to get that goal where he burst through from uh, the ricochet off Cedric. And then he went through and then he kind of stumbled. But he worked tirelessly up top in the second half in particular. And I think I'll give Andre Gray a seven and a half uh, like Carrillo. I think it was obviously it wasn't his best game. He didn't get a goal. But kind of on work rate, it was just it's really good to see Andre Gray putting a big shift. He got a really good perception as he went off um, for Dini late in the second half. Now moving on to the, uh, onto the subs. So we had a couple of force changes. Obviously, uh, Eunice Cabal had to go off again. He's injury. He's so injury prone. Eunice, Eunice Cabal um, and Adrian Mariapa came on. Um, you might have seen in my vlog. I'm saying a lot in the vlog, but you might have seen in my vlog. I was a little bit wary when Mariapa came on because he hadn't had a lot of game time in quite a while. I think the last time was right back against Bristol City, but before that, he's not really a regular. He kind of dips in and out of the team. Um, but I thought Adrian Mar Mariapa did well. I think I'll give him. I'll give him a seven. I thought he was pretty good. He did what he had to do. Then going on to Darry Amat, blimey, he came on for Kik Femini. He was hobbling off, so hopefully it's not too long. Like I said before, but Darry Amat, he picked up on the edge. I was just thinking, go on, Darryl, have, have a hit, his son. Um, and he, it literally, what a shot into the bottom corner. I, I did not expect that from Yamat. It was, I was thinking it was more of a hit and hope, but he knew what he was doing right in the side netting. Superb strike from Dariama, and I think I've got to give him. I'll give him an eight and a half for that because that was just what what a hit that was for you right back as well, and then that spark scenes in the away in the away end. But I thought Dariama just for his goal, give him an eight and a half. And then the last sub, which was Troy Deeney, um, he did okay. He held, he held the ball up well after coming on for Gray. Um, got a great reception as well when he came on. Uh, from the travelling supporters, and I just think Troy's. I think he's so much better with the strike partner. If 
But the thing is, at the minute, there's no point changing the formation because although our strike is isolated, our midfield is playing so well, we don't want to change that. And that's the thing. If we change, our, it, change to have two strikers up front, then we've got to change the whole system in the midfield. And I don't want to do that. And I'd prefer to sacrifice the striker being more isolated than kind of ruining ruining that core in the midfield with Decore, Chalaba, Cleverly. He doesn't want to kind of change it and then and then put two up top and then we go to a 4-4-2. I think he's right just to keep it how it is. I know people are saying Andre Gray's a bit isolated up top. I know people are saying he's not looking his best. But you've got to trust Mark Silver in this one. He wants the midfield to be as strong as, strong as possible. And we saw against yes, uh, again yesterday... Southampton didn't have a sniff at all. I mean, going forwards, they were dominated in the midfield. Midfield are playing so, so well that we can't change it. And I think keep, just keep playing up one up top and we'll continue to be successful this season. But anyway, there are my player ratings for yesterday's game against Southampton. Let me know if you went to the game, what you thought of it. Um, a lot of comments on yesterday's vlog. So I really appreciate that. And the support has been magnificent. I can't say magnificent. What would have just been magnificent recently? But yeah, if you did enjoy the player ratings, leave a like. Comment down below your player ratings if you want to let me know or anything you agree or disagree with. Um, but I think a lot of people will agree with how kind of how positive it was for yesterday, uh, yesterday's performance against Southampton. Subscribe so you don't miss any more Watford fan content and I will see you next time. <laughs>